Hello people, in this video we are looking at diabetes mellitus and pregnancy. So in this uh, we will be looking at something like di overt diabetes mellitus that is you have diabetes mellitus before pregnancy itself right and then there is something called as GDM that is gestational diabetes mellitus the diabetes that comes due to pregnancy okay so these two topics we will be covering. First of all diabetes mellitus what is it it's a chronic metabolic disorder okay so in this there can be either that you have an uh, insulin deficiency that could be like a type 1 uh, uh, diabetes mellitus or a type 2 diabetes mellitus where there can be enough insulin but there is insulin resistance there is no uh, insulin usage by your cells to metabolize the glucose okay so type 1 and type 2 have you understood guys so these are the standard things nothing to do with pregnancy so diabetes mellitus is a chronic metabolic disorder so basically there will be either insulin deficiency or there will be a resistance or a decreased sensitivity to the action of insulin right um, so what and all have we looked at so far we have looked at what diabetes mellitus is under that you have type 1 and type 2 right type 1 and type 2 so basically a woman can start off uh, her pregnancy with type 1 or type 2 diabetes mellitus if she's starting off her pregnancy with diabetes mellitus that will be called as an overt diabetes mellitus right uh, so how will you know that let us look at this So, an uh, overt diabetes is also called as pre-gestational diabetes. So, basically here, she has uh, diabetes mellitus uh, at the beginning of pregnancy. So, possibly before pregnancy, she had diabetes. So, how do you know this? Her fasting glucose exceeds 126 milligram per deciliter. Okay, her fasting glucose will be more than 126 milligram per deciliter. Guys, this is what you have to know. So, this will indicate that she has diabetes. Okay guys, did you understand over diabetes or pre-gestational diabetes? That's what we are looking at. So basically this is a more dangerous kind of, because here what happens, she's starting off her pregnancy with uh, diabetes and because in the first trimester there's organogenesis, right? So this diabetes at this stage can lead to anomalies, fine? So how will you know, how will you screen her for uh, uh, gestational diabetes, sorry, pre-gestational pre diabetes? A fasting glucose greater than 126 mg per deciliter can indicate to you that uh, she has diabetes mellitus or if her HbA1c, that is her hemoglobin, that is glycosylated hemoglobin, if it is greater than 6.5, then it indicates to us that it is a pre-gestational diabetes mellitus or overt diabetes mellitus. Is it becoming too much guys? So what is this H hemoglobin A1c? This will indicate to you how much of the hemoglobin which is a protein is glycosylated. Right? So over 3 months your RBC's lifespan is 3 months. So if your RBC's um, which have hemoglobin, your red blood cells will have hemoglobin. If the hemoglobin is glycosylated, if it is value is greater than 6.5, then it indicates that she is di having diabetes mellitus. Okay. So basically, if it's less than 6.5, it is good. So did you understand, guys? So here you're checking for overt diabetes mellitus or pre-gestational diabetes mellitus, which is dangerous because of organogenesis happening at the first trimester. This uh, pre-gestational diabetes or overt diabetes mellitus can lead to anomalies. Now, if the RBCs are abnormal in shape, could be like sickle cell anemia, etc., then you will have to check for something called as serum fructose amine and those values are mentioned here. Okay, So that is only if the RBC shapes are abnormal etc. So look at overt diabetes again guys. So basically here they are saying that she comes in, you are checking her fasting plasma glucose. If it is greater than 126 then she has diabetes mellitus. Then you give her a 75 gram of glucose. right? After 2 hours, you will check if the value exceeds greater than 200, then again she has uh, uh, diabetes, you can confirm that. Um, or if the HbA1c, this is blood, uh, you are checking the hemoglobin, glycosylated hemoglobin greater than 6.5. Okay, so either this or this or this. So this will indicate to you that she has pre-gestational or over diabetes. Note that any van value is enough. Okay, so basically what did you understand here? She will also probably have other symptoms of diabetes mellitus like polyuria, polydipsia, weight loss, right? She can have polyuria, she has the frequency of urination is increased, polydipsia, she drinks a lot of water, 
weight loss is there right so all these uh, symptoms can be there in these people indicating that she has overt or pregestational diabetes okay so basically in these people the baby born can have sacral agenesis sacral agenesis is specific of overt diabetes mellitus uh, it's not just that the only thing happens but if it is there then it indicates uh, overt diabetes mellitus okay so now we are done with overt diabetes mellitus guys now let's move on to gestational diabetes mellitus gestational diabetes mellitus we have moved on guys uh, this is when you are checking that she has diabetes mellitus because of pregnancy so uh, look at this why it happens first let us look at that so basically her, the human placental lactogen estrogen growth hormone cortisol all these will increase okay because of which what will happen this insulin maze which is uh, something which will digest the insulin will increase and because of that there will be less insulin insulin is a good thing right at least um, not too much of it but yes insulin uh, less insulin will be there and hence there will be more glucose which will lead to gestational diabetes mellitus we are not talking about over diabetes mellitus we are talking about gestational diabetes mellitus okay in addition to less insulin these people can also have insulin resistance okay so that is why dual things a uh, type 1 kind of situation type 2 kind of a diabetes mellitus situation everything is added up here somebody looks unhappy here with the less insulin and also insulin resistance two two things okay so basically gestational diabetes mellitus we told you why it happens right um, basically in this uh, what happens is um, uh, there is a increased sugar uh, glucose levels because of pregnancy because of the hormones of pregnancy okay so look at this there is a priscilla white's classification of pregnant diabetic women this is not just for gdm they didn't mention GD, gdm here any pregnant diabetic woman could be overt or gdm so basically uh, here they are talking about gestational diabetes so this part of it is gdm for gdm they have said that gestational diabetes there can be a a1 and a2 okay a1 is basically the, she can control her uh, uh, glucose by diet and a2 she will need insulin okay so this one is gdm so basically the glucose levels you can see based on uh, how low it is if it is not very high then they can treat by diet that will be a1 if the glucose pl fasting plasma glucose is uh, glucose is high then she will need insulin okay so this is gestational diabetes class now look at the ones below b c d e is not there f h r b is if the duration of uh, her diabetes is less than 10 years that means this will be like more like an overt diabetes mellitus right so less than 10 years c is 10 to 19 years d is greater than 20 years greater than 20 years will be d okay now coming to f f means she has nephropathy associated h means she has coronary artery disease associated something heart condition r means she has retinopathy if it is retinopathy you should not uh, they should not go into labor okay because they can have retinal detachment so that was the priscilla white's classification basically here they are saying that patients with poor glycemic control and vasculopathy are in are at the increased risk of complications like iud that is intrauterine death is it intrauterine growth restriction preeclampsia and ketoacidosis so these people if they have poor glycemic control if there is vasculopathy then they will go into complications like iugr iud preeclampsia and ketoacidosis okay so so this is uh, not gestational diabetes mellitus uh, classification i would say this is a diabetes mellitus in pregnancy classification okay now uh, uh, you have seen that as soon as she comes in they have done uh, a fasting glucose etc hb a1c etc to know if she is a pre existing case of diabetes mellitus now how do you know if she is a gdm that you will check only after 24 weeks initially you have already checked let's assume and now at uh, 24 weeks or beyond you are checking for gestational diabetes mellitus okay so here uh, this one is not uh, that bad it does not cause anomalies anomalies are not there in the baby that's what they are saying here but it can lead to other issues like a big baby etc now look at this um, how do you screen for gdm guys what are we looking at take a break and understand we are looking at diabetes in pregnancy we are looking at all types of diabetes she had it before pregnancy she has it now 
uh, after pregnancy. So after pregnancy means if it is uh, coming up after 24 weeks, you can check it, you can catch it. So basically you will screen for gestational diabetes mellitus. Uh, so here what will be there? I'm thinking uh, one of the things will be like severe weight gain, sudden weight gain, severe weight gain. What is it? Are they, are they screening everybody? Okay, so how are they doing this? This is Dipsy. Dipsy is uh, basically, um, what is the full form? So guys, look at this. Diabetes and Pregnancy Societies of India. This is something very specific to India. So look at this. Dipsy, Diabetes and Pregnancy. That much you can guess. Diabetes and Pregnancy Societies of India. So here they are talking about 75 gram um, uh, glucose they will give this woman. Uh, whenever she comes, she doesn't have to be fasting. So that is very cool, right? So as soon as she comes, whether she's fasting or not, you can just give her this 75 gram glucose. And after two hours, just one, uh, uh, just once, that is after two hours only, you're checking if it is greater than 140, she has gestational diabetes mellitus. If she has greater than 200, that means she has diabetes mellitus. Okay, greater than 140, you remember gestational diabetes mellitus. Okay. So basically, this is a one step procedure. Okay. And here you will check for the venous plasma glucose. What glucose? Venous plasma glucose you will check. Okay. If after two hours, if it is greater than, see after how much? After two hours, if it is greater than 140 mg per deciliter, if you don't write all this, no marks. mg per deciliter, then you will diagnose her with GDM. Okay. So here the screening is different. What are you screening for? You are screening for gestational diabetes mellitus. Okay. So just uh, look here. Earlier what they were doing, uh, this is I think uh, uh, not the Indian standard uh, or they were doing it earlier. Glucose tolerance test, again 75 gram uh, glucose only they are giving. But here you the woman has to be fasting. Okay. And they will check fasting values after one hour, after two hour, like so many values they have. But we are not looking at that. We are looking only at Dipsy Diabetes and Pregnancy Societies of India, non-fasting women, 75 gram glucose. After two hours, you will check her venous plasma glucose, one step procedure. If greater than 140 milligram per deciliter, you can diagnose her of GDM. If it is greater than 200, it's diabetes mellitus, is it? Okay. Now, what are the complications of uh, uh, diabetes and pregnancy? Let us look at that. See, there are two things here. She is having diabetes, now she becomes pregnant. This is one thing. What is the effect of this pregnancy on the diabetes? There is one more thing. Now she is pregnant, then she is developing diabetes. So what is the effect of diabetes on the pregnancy? Is that the way we are going to put it? Just see, we have arranged it now. So starting she might uh, develop uh, uh, hypertension, she might have preeclampsia, she may go into retinopathy, nephropathy, heart disease. Okay, there can be polyhydramnios, right, um, uh, large, more amniotic fluid. There can be infection which can lead to preterm labor, abruption, right. Then abortion, sudden intrauterine fetal death can occur due to uncontrolled diabetes or villous edema because there is a compromise in the blood supply to the fetus. There can be sudden intrauterine death, remember, poor glycemic control, same thing we told you, uncontrolled or a fetal lactic acidosis can happen, right. Maternal ketoacidosis also can lead to the abortion. Diabetic vasculopathies, obviously, there's no proper blood flow to the fetus. Now, let us say all this is survived and now there's a, what, what, how is the baby? Baby is large, it can need more cesarean section, more instrumentation, forceps, vacuum, birth canal injuries for the mother can become more because of this big baby. Shoulder dystocia can happen because there's a disproportionate growth of the shoulder to head ratio. Then, uh, once the delivery happens, what happens? There can be PPH, that is postpartum hemorrhage can be there. Pure perium, how will the pure perium be? She can have pure perial sepsis, lactational failure. Why is lactational failure? Because the baby is so big. Uh, okay. A recurrence of subsequent preg uh, is rec recurrence can happen in subsequent pregnancies so with an over diabetes mellitus itself. Okay. So we have arranged the maternal complications in a certain order now. Now let us go to the fetal complications. Okay, now baby is inside. Okay, we are talking about the fetal complications. Guys, uh, take a break and uh, relax. What are we looking at? Over diabetes mellitus and gestational diabetes mellitus. Okay, so here uh, fetal and uh, uh, fetal hazards, fetal macrosomia. Baby is large. What is somia? Macrosomia. Somia. Macrosomia means what? Is the Entire baby big when you say macrosomia. 
Why is it big? Because of hyperglycemia, hypertrophy, hyperplasia of the fetal islet cells of Langerhans. Okay. So, baby is having more carbohydrate utilization, accumulation of fat. Okay. Insulin like growth factors are also involved in fetal growth. So, baby is becoming nice and big, 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 big. Okay. So, you got your answer. Why is the baby so huge? Right? Everything is hyperplasic. Accumulation of fat. Insulin like growth factors. But all this, if the mother is having good diabetic uh, glucose control, then all this will, chances will be less. Okay. So, let us see why all this is happening. Carbohydrate utilization accumulation of fat insulin like growth factors some things like this you can see okay then who will have pancreatic hyperplasia who is going to make more insulin the baby the fetus fetus has to make more insulin so its pancreas will be having hyperplasia it will be making enough insulin, lot of insulin because mother is having, uh, uh, what, she's having diabetes, she's having, she's giving it lot of glucose. So, baby will make nice insulin, pancreatic hyperplasia, okay. So, basically, they have also said thing, elevation of maternal free, free fatty acids, maternal free fatty acids are more looks like. So, it is uh, transferred to the fetus. So, there will be more triglyceride synthesis in the baby leading to adiposity. Adiposity. So, transfer to baby. Adiposity in the baby. Okay. So, you have understood why there is macrosomia. Guys, have you understood? Okay. Now, we will go fast. Don't worry. Now, coming to newborn complications. Okay, here itself we had to mention one more thing. Congenital malformation. This will be more in overt, isn't it? Over diabetes. So, basically, if the sugars are not in control, right, and especially during organogenesis, whether it is type 1 or type 2 diabetes mellitus, but if it is at the organogenesis stage, that is in the first trimester. Yes, so, uh, are you focusing, guys? We are looking at... Uh, Congenital malformation. So basically, which are the factors which are teratogens, you know, in this case. So mostly like teratogenesis, uh, you can say. So what and all are they saying here? Why is all this happening? Because of, we'll edit it here, genetic susceptibility, hyperglycemia. The hyperglycemia is like a teratogenesis, uh, gen, teratogen, is it? Arachidonic acid deficiency, ketone bodies will be more Somatomedin will be inhibited, is it? And there will be a lot of free oxygen radicals, guys, so that you can uh, understand free oxygen radicals. You saw it even in retinopathy. Then, chromosome abnormality will not be there. Okay. Risk of fetal chromosomal abnormality is not there. Chromosomes are perfectly fine, but there is congenital malformation will be there. Okay, because of hyperglycemia, arachidonic dash, the deficiency, ketone body excess, at least this you will be able to say, right? Ketone body excess, hyperglycemia, all this you will be able to say. Free oxygen radicals, say this one also, okay? So, all this will lead to what? Congenital, this can lead to congenital malformation, mostly when, if it is an overt diabetes mellitus, okay? In first trimester... So, it is overt diabetes mellitus only they are talking about here. Okay, then coming to newborn. Shall we move on to newborn guys? This video has become too long. Let's continue in the next video guys. Newborn complications we have to look at. Management of diabetes mellitus in pregnancy. All this we have to still look at. Okay, we will meet you in the next video guys. Bye-bye.